Good evening, and welcome to the Servative Hour, an hour of political commentary. Your call's welcome. I'm Brian Merry, host of the Servative Hour, and the topic for this March 3rd, 2015, is the marijuana-related bills in the legislature. Hearing date for these bills is on Friday, March 6th, 1.30 p.m., in room 11.13.1113. And among those uh, going, or at least uh, thinking that they really should be there to testify, would be myself and also some guests I have on the show from uh, Nebraska Normal, Omaha Normal, and uh, Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana. Uh, those guests are Jay and Ed. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Yes, thank you, Brian. The bills, um, LB643, it's Medical Marijuana Bill, LB390, a CBD oil bill, LB5461414, Naloxone, and then LB326, uh, one which uh, I have here, brownie felony, and uh, relating uh, marijuana that you would eat to K2 and bath salts in the legislation. I'm basically calling that one the back door to felonizing personal amounts of cannabis. You put it in something that you eat or you drink, all of a sudden, any amount, it says, will get you a felony. I wasn't aware that Nebraska was into putting people in prison for a personal amount of cannabis. All right, but the main one that we are supporting, a medical marijuana legalization bill introduced for the first time. Uh, it's uh, from Journal Star, oh, uh, StarHerald.com from January 21st, 2015. A medical marijuana legalization bill introduced for first time in Nebraska. Uh, and, uh, well, anyway, I wanted to have you and Ed talk about the things you're involved in. Uh, Ed, with uh, Veterans for uh, Medical, Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana, um, and uh, would like to hear about what you've been doing with that. <clears throat> well, r right now, as it sits, uh, veterans across the country are only allowed medical marijuana if they live in medical marijuana states. Otherwise, they're refused this safe and effective medication for many afflictions and conditions. PTSD being uh, one of the most important ones. Chronic pain, neuropathy, there's a whole list of them. Head injury. Head injuries. What, the, what happens is if you live in a um, non-medical marijuana state, you are refused these medications. And if uh, you live in a medical marijuana state, you're allowed to use them with your opiates. They also provide um, opiate sparing so you can cut back on your medications without really having any terrible side effects. Let's see. The um, medical marijuana bill would <clears throat> make it so that you wouldn't uh, be affected by something called the opium agree opiate agreement. Which opiate they, agreement. Opiate agreement. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, what that is, uh, the DEA, it's a DEA request that everybody that takes opiates in the country sign this opiate agreement. And if, if you choose test positive for cannabis, you are refused your opiates and not allowed to use them anymore and to get prescriptions for them. It's a fine way for the pharmaceuticals to keep their monopoly on opiates. Absolutely. But uh, LB643, the medical marijuana bill, which will be part of the hearings of Friday, March 6th at 1.30 p.m. in room 1113. I have the article about that. I'll read just a little bit of it. A uh, medical marijuana legalization bill introduced for first time in Nebraska. Paul Hamill, World Herald News Service, posted January 21st, 2015. Uh, Lincoln, the last day of bill introduction in the Nebraska legislature, saw the state's first proposal to legalize marijuana for medicinal use. 
On Wednesday, State Senator Tommy Garrett of Bellevue and three other senators introduced Legislative Bill 643, a measure titled the, quote, Cannabis Compassion and Care Act. While 23 states in the District of Columbia now allow sales of marijuana for relief from pain and nausea and other medical uses, a bill to allow it in Nebraska has never been introduced previously. LB 643 would allow nonprofit uh, compassion centers to grow and sell marijuana to people who obtain a state card from a physician who has seen them at least three times in the past 90 days. The bill would also allow cardholders or designated caregivers to grow up to 12 marijuana plants themselves for medical use. Skipping down a bit, uh, the bill also cites the medical benefits of marijuana from a 1999 report by the National Academy of Sciences in helping patients deal with AIDS and hepatitis C. Co-sponsors of the measure are three first-year lawmakers, Crete Senator Laura Ebke and Omaha Senator Joan Joni Craighead and Lincoln Senator Patty Panzing Brooks. And this would, you wouldn't have to sign the opiate agreement or be uh, denied. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the problems I see with this bill is overtaxing the already overtaxed Veterans Administration by having to go see your physician three times in 90 days. The VA is pretty crowded. They have a lot of people they're serving. You know, they want to be able to do it effectively. And if you've got to overcrowd it by going in three times instead of just once, normally you only go in twice a year. Well, perhaps that's something that could be amended. Uh, it looks like maybe you'd only have to go in three times one time and then not have to. It looks like maybe you'd only have to go in three times one time and then not have to. It, They're still going for a monthly average, though, of seeing your doctor, and which is if you want to document how well it's working for you as medicine, yeah, that's fine. But at some point, we're going to know this, and it's just an extra burden, like he says, on the veterans. Yeah, it does seem a burden, burden, yeah, a burden to have uh, that requirement. Well, and a lot of people have to drive to the VAs or go to the VAs to from varying distances from across Nebraska. <coughs> But still, all in all, the uh, LB643 uh, uh, Cannabis Compassion and Care Act, you would be oh, it, supportive. Oh, it's a giant step in the right direction. And uh, Jay, with uh, would you say you're with, you're with Omaha Normal and Nebraska Normal? Originally with Cures Not Wars and still am, and then I've come to Nebraska and joined the board of Nebraska Normal. And so I'm active here as well, but... I'm a transplant to this area, starting with my activism in Indiana and Michigan, and uh, Indiana being a very hard state to crack, too, as far as getting anything to happen in their legislature. So I put a lot of more of my effort into Michigan, where I helped make cannabis medicine legal there, and where they are turning around and getting ready to legalize recreational use in Michigan. Basically, in if you can get the people to get the numbers of signatures required on a petition and you can get that on the ballot, pretty much anywhere in this country you're going to get any kind of cannabis legis uh, cannabis initiative passed. I don't even think we have to say medical only. We are in Nebraska, and I understand that. And again, it's a huge step forward. But eventually we're going to have to solve this problem of cannabis prohibition because it's just being used as a cheap excuse to keep us from having the medical use and the industrial use the way we really should. I can't watch them. Okay. So um, as a Cures Not Wars um, member and associate and big fan of Dana Beale, the founder of the organization, a big part of what I do is organize rallies and speak at rallies. No, and so I've line. been from oh. Washington, D.C. to Seattle, Washington with the cannabis movement in some shape or form or another for the last decade now. So... My schedule usually starts with the Ann Arbor Hash Bash, which is every first Saturday of April on the Diag of the University of Michigan. And it's a guaranteed huge crowds, tens of thousands of people crowd in no matter what weather. And then the next stop is the 4th of July at Washington, D.C. for the Washington, D.C. smoking, which has been going on since 1970. And then the next stop for me is the Seattle Hemp Fest, which is the second weekend in September. 
And then another stop for me after that in August, the second weekend of August, is the Boston Freedom Fest, which is another one of these huge events where Seattle Hemp Fest is the largest in the country. The Boston Freedom Fest is the largest on the East Coast. And again, tens of thousands of people gather on Boston Common for that. I also spend a lot of time um, monitoring and helping with the development of the hemp industry on Oglala Lakota Nation land, or what the white man calls the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and Rosebud and the other associated reservations where the federalities have finally gotten off their case about all quote-unquote marijuana. Of course, we know the real word is cannabis. And so they're going to have their hemp industry finally and not have to ever worry about being sued or having their crops stolen from them like has happened in the past. And uh, the reason they're going to have a level of freedom beyond what we're hoping for in Nebraska with our hemp and medical is because they went ahead and have the right to grow for recreational purposes. Again, we can't allow this excuse to continue because even if we pass a law for medical, even if we pass a law for industrial hemp, we're still going to have these stupid, unnecessary compromises that keep the farmer or keep the patient from fully expressing their rights. And I'm just not for that. And now you're here with uh, Omaha Normal and Nebraska Normal? Yes, specifically Nebraska Normal since I live in Lincoln. And Omaha Normal can be found on Facebook and also Nebraska Normal. And Nebraska Normal, unfortunately, on Facebook has two pages. There's one older page that's pretty easy to spot because there's no activity on it and nothing posted. So if you find that one, you're at the wrong one. You want to try the other one on Facebook. Okay. And uh, you're going to be there uh, Friday, March 6th at 1.30 p.m. in room 1113 of the state capitol. I am going to be there with bells on. I'm going to be there with a vengeance. It's about time we have a good, clean cannabis medicine law and not have a law that's full of... I mean, it's bad enough we have to have plant counts and quantity limits. And right there, you have to have higher quantity limits if you're going to have plants or you're just going to have excuses for law enforcement to bust people anyways. What I've seen in Michigan was uh, they had a, a prosecutor there who didn't, and a state's attorney that didn't care about the law, the will of the people actually were campaigning against the passage of this law. And that sounds familiar with what's going on right now in Nebraska. And then when the law was passed, Rather than enforce that law, they were telling law enforcement to go ahead and partner with the DEA and federales and go ahead and bust people anyways. And it's gotten really bad in some places where they basically want to just steal from the compassion clubs and they want to brutalize the patients and terrorize the community to the point where people in Michigan who have medical excuses aren't getting the cards now because they don't want to be listed. They don't want to have a cop pull up behind them and have this list that the cop can look at where he can say, well, this person has medical marijuana status. And instead of leaving them alone, pull them over anyways. See if you can bust them anyways. That's what the policy has been in Michigan. And it's, you know, I don't want to see that happen in here in Nebraska. And if it happens here in Nebraska, I'm going to be here to protest about it. The phone number is 402-474-5086. If you call in, you'll be immediately live on the air. We're talking about marijuana-related bills in the legislature. Um, LB-643, medical marijuana uh, called the uh, Cannabis Compassion and Care Act. Then LB-390, one which would legalize just CBD oil. Um, Then there's also one LB-546 to legalize... uh, Naloxone. And then there's one of uh, LB-326, which I've written as the Brownie Felony Act, which yeah. would make a felony to have pot brownies and would link that with uh, synthetic marijuana, K2, and bath salts as far as... Uh, as far as being a backdoor way to arrest people for a pot Yes, felony. tie one to the other when they have really nothing in common. Uh, damn, a phone call came in. I didn't press the button in time. Call back if you're calling in. Phone number 402 474 Five zero eight six. Now something. Oh, there he is. Wait. All right. Okay, we'll put them on the air. KZUM, you're on the uh, KZUM, you're on the air. KZUM, you're Hi, on. Hi, Ryan. The, Hi. I'm I'm calling because I'm going to be at the meeting on Friday. Hooray. 
Is this, is this Maggie? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you very well. Okay, I'm going oh. to be on... It sounds like it's repeating myself. <laughs> You're going to be at the hearing on Friday. Correct. Because Feedback. my granddaughter has epilepsy. She's two and a half years old. She's on... I couldn't begin to tell you how many medications. She's had brain surgery. She has a Vargas vein stimulator implanted in her chest, and she's still having seizures. And, I mean, this is like her last option now. They're, I mean, they're talking, taking out part of her brain, and it's just insane to me that they know cannabis works, they know hemp oil works, and you can go 500 miles from here and buy it, and you can't get it in Nebraska. Ed's saying he's hearing a little feedback. If you've got a radio on, you could turn that down and uh, continue. If you don't have a radio on, then we're just imagining it. Go, go ahead. Okay. Sounds like you have good reason to be there to testify. Yes, I did have my radio on. Oh, okay. Much better now. Okay. We, heard, right. we heard you just fine. Go, go ahead. I said it sounds like you have good reason to be there. I mean, I'm... Oh, Elaine is going to be there. I don't know if I told this, she's to this, to this, told you this before. She's two and a half years old. She can't walk. She can't talk. She can't feed herself. She doesn't even know how to laugh. And it is just so incredibly sad knowing that, like I said, 500 miles away, she could get something that could potentially help her, but she can't get it here. And they can't afford to move. Yeah, it's a real atrocity, you know. They keep telling us, what about the children, what about the children? Well, what about your child? Uh, Ed has something he wanted to say on this. <clears throat> well, yeah, I'd like to read a list here of uh, can do things medical marijuana can do. It can relieve pain, suppresses appetite, helps with weight loss, kills or slows bacteria growth, reduces blood sugar levels, reduces vomiting and nausea, reduces seizures and convulsions, treats fungal infection, reduces inflammation, aids sleep, reduces risk of artery blockage, inhibits cell growth and tumors and cancer cells, treats psoriasis, tranquilizing used to manage psychosis, suppresses muscle spasms, relieves anxiety, stimulates appetite, Promotes bone growth, reduces function in the immune system, reduces contractions in the small intestines, and protects the nervous system degeneration. That's a pretty good list. I know, and it's illegal. Yeah, absolutely, that's why we're here. We want to change that, just like everybody else. Okay, well, I will be there on... Friday, and maybe I'll see you there. Oh, absolutely. I will be there. And also, okay. Amama, if I can invite you to an event, the first Saturday of May, May 2nd this year, we're going to have a rally at the Capitol, and we're going to by then have a lot of things to talk about of what's happening with this legislature on this issue. And there's a chance that if this law doesn't pass, we're going to be going full force with the ballot initiative in this state, and the people are going to have to be the legislature if the legislature doesn't want to do their job for the people. And we definitely want, you know, case studies like yours there in front of everybody to see. So mark your calendar for the first Saturday of May, not just this year, but every year from here on out. It's a global day for cannabis liberation. We call it uh, Lincoln Liberation Day here in Lincoln. And we'd love to have you there, maybe even let you speak. Okay, you said May 2nd? May 2nd, yep. And Capitol? Right at the Capitol, yes. Okay, I will definitely be there. Global Marijuana March. Okay. Well, thank you very much for calling in, and good luck with thank you uh, very much. everything. Bye. Bye. Okay. And this is the thing. I mean, it's, it's a lot like so many other issues in politics where it's really easy to be hard-nosed about it and be stiff-necked about it until somebody you care about is affected by it. It's the same thing about, um, you know, 
homosexuality. You know, you can be real hard nosed until you find out that your son or your daughter is gay and they come out to you. And then all of a sudden, as a politician, you care about this issue now. And all of a sudden, you want to talk about it and do something positive about it. So I'm actually amazed that I know that our legislature is being personally affected and changing their minds over the personal stories that are being told to them by their constituents. Compared to Indiana and even Michigan in some cases, this is just the kind of response to the will of the people that I haven't seen in a legislature. So I have high hopes for this legislature. Yes, we need to get out and stand up and be counted for this because for so long we haven't had the chance to be able to effectively do this. Now's the time. We need you there. Of course, there are those who don't want to hear what's true, like Doug Peterson, Nebraska's attorney general. And one thing I'm hoping to do when they're to, uh, they would rather go with debunked studies and just obvious nonsense to justify a case for, for which there is no justification. I have this, uh, speaking of linking things, from World Herald Bureau, Paul Hamill, from January 15th, 2015. Sex trafficking, edible marijuana, our new Nebraska AG's top targets. Uh, Lincoln, new Nebraska Attorney General Doug Peterson called on state lawmakers Thursday to protect the state from the, quote, terrible social experiment that is legalized marijuana and to better guard children from human and sex traffickers. Peterson, who was elected in November, outlined his legislative priorities for 2015, saying they were, quote, focused on protecting Nebraska's quality of life, specifically that of our youth. Well, not if they would need some sort of medical uh, marijuana treatment, of course. Uh, further down, another of Peterson's priorities is passage of LB-326, introduced by Gothenburg Senator Matt Williams. The bill would add, quote, ingestible marijuana products, including food, candy, and drinks, to the state's list of controlled substances and would make possession of them a felony. Such edible marijuana products are popular in Colorado, where voters have legalized medical and recreational uses of pot and have been increasingly showing up in Nebraska. LB-326 also would make changes designed to outlaw new generations of dangerous synthetic pots sold as incense or bath salts and marketed under names like K2. Last month, Bruning joined Oklahoma in suing Colorado to halt recreational sales of marijuana to that state and stem the flow of pot to its neighbors. Peterson said he's gotten a lot of emails since taking office from people telling him, quote, I just want to smoke my doobies and let the lawsuit go. But the attorney general said he strongly disagrees that pot is harmless, particularly for children. Quote, what is going on is Colorado is a terrible social experiment, Peterson said, that in five years that state will regret. He pointed to research from Harvard and Northwestern universities linking moderate pot use by young adults to brain abnormalities. And I have a number of articles here debunking that study. When asked if he was concerned that enacting longer prison sentences would increase overcrowding in state pris prisons, Peterson said, while it might, his highest priority is to protect public safety. <laughs> what a joke this guy is. Build more prisons. So if you're going to pose yourself as the prosecutor, not just of the people of Nebraska, but people outside of your jurisdiction in Colorado, I'm sure it would be very ter terrible and terrorizing to have this experiment that will show that cannabis is the safe and effective substitute to hard drugs and the safe and effective substitute to pharmaceutical drugs and take that whole aspect of the war of drugs out of his budget. So I'm sure he's quite terrified, but I've got news for you. It's going to happen, and when this law passes, we're going to remember that you campaigned against it, and we're going to watch you because we don't want to see you deciding to tell the police in this state to go against the law and ignore the will of the people. You're not going to get away with it. But they are running scared, though. And again, the, the rhetoric against cannabis has not matured since the 1920s. I mean, they're going all the way back to the old reefer madness stories. And it's just, the what about the children? What about the children? Well, you know what? Your kid could eat a couple cigarette butts and die from the nicotine. Your kid could eat a metric ton of cannabis and survive and be fine. When they talk about the cannabis today being more potent, even in an edible form, than it was in the 70s or whatever time you know they want to harken back to 
the thing is, when you're talking about the dangers that you have just from nothing more than the ingestion of cannabis, whether you eat it, smoke it, or whatever, a million times zero still equals zero. And this law about edibles is just a, w- a backdoor way to sneak attack the average person and make their personal stash size that should just be a, a minor infraction a felony. And that's a cynical, weak, desperate attempt to emotionally lash out at the fact that your little um, zeitgeist of cannabis being evil is melting away in the fields of popular opinion. The phone number is 402-474-5086. If I missed your call earlier, please call back. And if you call in, you'll be immediately live on the air. Uh, This is KZUM Lincoln and KZUM HD. All right. All right. We're back on the air with Ed and Jay. Uh, Ed from uh, Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana. Uh, Jay from many campaigns. Uh, now not worse than Nebraska Normal. And now Nebraska Normal and Omaha Normal. Omaha Normal, Nebraska Normal can be found on Facebook, as can the Servative Hour and Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana. Also, website Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana dot com and we're talking about various uh, marijuana bills in the legislature which there is a public hearing for on Friday March 6th that's this coming Friday at 1 30 p.m. in room 1113 at the Capitol and we're thinking that uh, we really should be there if not in fact we are going to be there and having some things to say. And I think everyone should be there. I'm, I'm curious to see who would show their face at that hearing and try to say something quite authoritatively against cannabis. I, just, I think that would be quite entertaining. Oh, it'd be very interesting also. I would like to hear this information. And it I, sounds very pertinent. Yeah, I'm hoping that the, legislatures, uh, the legislators in this state are going to wake up to realize that the people that would campaign against us, these drug treatment people, maybe prison guard unions, police unions, they're all paid to have their opinion, and they are not telling the truth, and they don't care about telling the truth. It's like a whole, you know, information war that they're waging at the American people through their legislatures and their representatives. Well, you have the for-profit prison industry, for-profit uh, treatment industry, as though uh, marijuana uh, use has to be treated as though some sort of opium, uh, opiate addiction. Uh, then, uh, of course, the pharmaceutical industry, liquor industry. Uh, natural resources, uh, the petrochemical and uh, forestry industries mm. who don't want the competition. Oh, yeah, just Koch brothers, just wait until we get the hemp industry doing energy farming here in Nebraska. The only energy farming crop that you don't even have to grow to maturity in order to harvest for your energy. Now, I mentioned the uh, Nebraska Attorney General, Doug Peterson. He will probably be there have a few articles, uh, Nebraska AG, Colorado pot law could cause long-term harm here, then has uh, his statement, Why Sue Colorado, where he mentions a number of bogus studies, and he said that these were commissioned about, these studies were commissioned by uh, who? NIDA. And that is? The National Institute for Drug Abuse, funded and- by our government. All right, and then... Uh, have from alternate.org why the media's fear-mongering on marijuana effects on the brain is faulty uh, by Paul Armentino April 17, 2014 this is one of the studies the Attorney General mentioned the mainstream media launched into a reefer mad frenzy this week after researchers from Harvard University in Boston and Northwestern University in Chicago published the results of a neuroimaging study Hmm. assessing the brains of a small cohort of regular marijuana smokers and non-users. The brain scans identified various differences between the two groups in three aspects of brain morphometry, gray matter density, volume, and shape. These differences triggered dozens of high-profile media outlets to lose their collective minds. And then they have a sampling of uh, study proves marijuana dangerous and all that. Yeah, that's a great example of double think there. You read the study about these supposed differences in the brain. What they find is that one part of the brain is actually growing larger and denser and with a greater population of neurons. 
And uh, it's not that the other side isn't growing smaller, but when you compare it to the control group, you see, no, you're talking about an overall improvement. So they look at this study and say, well, your grain gets bigger and stronger. Oh, we can't show people this. How can we spin this? So they spin it by simply saying there are changes. And then you're just left to kind of woo wonder what those changes might be. But it turns out the changes are an improvement, not a problem. It's like keep telling people cannabis is not a medical health problem. It's a medical health solution. Get out of the way. Let the people have their cures and stop this stupid war on the plant. Goes on to state, just imagine how the media would have responded in the study in question if the study in question had included more than 20 actual cases or if the authors had actually bothered to assess its subjects for demonstrable deficits in cognitive performance. Yes, that's right. Despite the sky is falling rhetoric and the shock claims of permanent brain damage, a careful review of the study and its findings reveal little, if any, cause for alarm. And then it goes on to say, CBS News at the time, Dr. Uh, Quote, Dr. Nora Volko, director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which helped fund the research, said the research was, quote, the clearest study I've ever read, uh, unquote, that looked long-term harm from marijuana use. Except it wasn't. A separate analysis of the data published only weeks later in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences acknowledged that the study's authors failed to properly control for subjects' socioeconomic status. It concluded, quote, A simulation of the confounding model reproduces the reported associations from the Duen Din cohort, suggesting that the casual effects estimated in Mare et al. are likely to be overestimated and that the true effects in regards to marijuana's potential uh, could be zero. Anyway, it's... Uh, and then uh, here's one from Harvard. Uh, Marijuana doesn't cause schizophrenia. This is from December 10th, 2012 by John M. Grohl. Uh, good news for people who worry that smoking too much marijuana, especially as a teenager, might lead to some dramatic problems in the future, even schizophrenia. New research from Harvard Medical School in a comparison finds families with a history of schizophrenia and those without finds little support for marijuana use as a cause of schizophrenia. Anyway, I just and thought... it's the same old chestnut they had from decades ago. I think it was back in the 70s, and it was the second time they'd figured out that. It was people who were schizophrenic were self-medicating with cannabis and were naturally drawn to it because it had some benefit for them and not the other way around. And again, you know, they say it's a gateway drug, it's a gatekeeper drug, that most people that start on cannabis stay on cannabis unless they do something shady in their uh, social network and they get it, uh, ostracized from it, in which case uh, then they become susceptible to being enticed into hard drugs and other new associates, people they shouldn't have been hanging with. But you can't blame cannabis for that. Um, now, the hearing dates, uh, Friday, uh, this Friday, March 6th, at 1.30 p.m. in room 1113. Uh, we'll be hearing on the uh, medical marijuana legalization bill. This is uh, the main one that's mainly gotten press, and we've talked about the Cannabis Compassion and Care Act, LB 643. Uh, on Friday. Oh, I'll mention it. Yes, Ed? Oh, yeah. I uh, also wanted to mention that Omaha Normal has a large box truck with uh, big screen televisions on each side and on the back, and they will be going around the Capitol uh, right immediately before the hearing. That will be absolutely brilliant. I can hardly wait to see that. Wow, that's something to be excited about. It looks pretty cool. If you'd like to see it, go to the Omaha Normal page, and it's right there. Well, all right. Now... Uh, mentioned our uh, Attorney General, uh, Doug Peterson. Uh, now, one thing he's done recently is go out to the border and look across and see trouble coming and have this from uh, North Platte Telegraph, nptelegraph.com. Peterson puts pot in spotlight. It's posted Saturday, February 20, 28th by Liz McHugh. This isn't the marijuana of the 1970s and 80s, Nebraska Attorney General Doug Peterson told an audience of law enforcement officers, county attorneys, and media Friday afternoon. 
Peterson spent Thursday and Friday at similar conferences in western Nebraska discussing the impact of Colorado's legalization of marijuana and gleaning ideas on how to respond to reported rises in marijuana use and negative health impacts. Peterson said the marijuana consumed prior to legalization had a much lower percentage, around 3 to 5% of tetrahydrocannabinols. I think that's industrial hemp they're talking about there. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The chemical in the plant that produces... uh, Well, they were all smoking ditch weed before it was legalized. Okay. He said percentages of THC in marijuana now are 15 to 20%. Quote, I want to go to the industry and see what they're saying, Peterson said. Quote, I read High Times. It's amusing. (laughs) Uh, this this amount of the chemical has a greater chance of causing psychotic episodes, Peterson said, especially for those with still developing brains. He said a 15-year-old girl in western Nebraska community was hospitalized with a psychotic breakdown after eating some of her parents' edible marijuana goods. Sounds straight out of William Randolph Hearst's old rags. I'm sure the truth of the story is the complete opposite of what's going on in the headline. Good old yellow journalism. Yeah, I never saw the story about the 15-year-old with a psychotic bre- breakdown after eating some Yeah, I can't really tell you about marijuana that goods. kind of thing either. But what I can tell you about is the fact that law enforcement in the western counties of Nebraska are going around illegally stopping people, illegally searching people, finding what their vape pens and things like that. Basically, all personal amounts. Nobody's hauling tons across the border. A ton would probably still tap out the city of Denver. But um, they're trying to manufacture statistics to make it look like there's an increase in activity when all there is is an increase in police activity. And what they're basically doing is wasting our tax dollars in order to generate revenue and also to generate this story, this this, uh, theme that somehow more pot is coming into Nebraska now or more people are deciding to smoke pot in Nebraska because of what's happening in Colorado. And it hasn't even happened in Colorado. You don't see an increase of uh, per capita drug use for cannabis in Colorado, but you do see a decrease in alcohol use and hard drug use now that people are having availability to the safe substitute. And I do say safe. I do not apologize about this at all. Cannabis is the safe substitute. If you have a problem with addiction, you probably don't have a problem with pot. If you're using pot and other drugs, you should quit the other drugs and stick to the pot. I've personally used cannabis to quit smoking cigarettes, and most deliberately to quit smoking cigarettes. I was a teenage alcoholic, and I smoked myself out of that. And it's so nice to have a choice in my life as to whether or not I want to recreate with a substance or not. When I was a teenage alcoholic, I didn't have that choice. When I was a cigarette smoker, I had to light up every 10 minutes. Obviously, pot is not the same thing as methamphetamine, for instance. And so if you're going to write a piece of legislation that uses those two words in the same sentence, it's probably a bad piece of legislation based on ignorance. And if it's not based on ignorance, if you know what you're doing to people writing laws like that, then this is vindictive, this is malice, and we don't need malicious laws. I don't like the idea of saying that if you have a cannabis conviction in the past, you can't be a caregiver or work in the cannabis industry or you can't grow industrial hemp on your farm. These are stupid compromises that law enforcement tries to insist on us making so that they can bust people anyways. And sure, they would rather bust someone for pot than they would want to bust somebody with a meth lab or the makings of a meth lab in their car on I-80. And as they're ramping up enforcement across that Colorado border county, they're not telling us how many of those people aren't even from Nebraska. They pluck interstate traffic off I-80 routinely on both sides of the state. And it's a, it's a crying shame, and it's also offensive. It's a trade war against other states. And if, you know, if our attorney general wants to start a trade war with Colorado now, I, you know, I thought you know, our constitution would, for this nation was designed so that we wouldn't have this kind of thing, that we wouldn't have highway taxes. We wouldn't be – there's still a tax stamp law in Nebraska. How are you yeah, – it's been struck down in every other state, but Nebraska still has managed to hand, hang on to its uh, cannabis tax stamp law. I would, re- I would bet my next 18 years of my life versus that law that that law isn't going to stand up to a real constitutional test in court. It's percent- pretending that something that's uh, useful and helpful is uh, dangerous 
and harmful. It's also they're uh, pretending that there's a problem with uh, traffic safety when the most stoned uh, marijuana user will still perform much better than someone who's well within the legal limit of uh, alcohol intake. That the reaction time, uh, you know, is is the, in in some ways traffic safety studies have shown better because people will drive more carefully, uh, and then try to say that it's causing well, some danger where it's not. Cannabis is a sensitizer, so you're going to be looking around. You're going to be paying more attention. Now, the only problem is if you're a naive user, and that's one of the things we used to say in Washington D.C. at the rallies: is we're here, we're high, we're used to it. Meaning. You get used to it. It has a reverse tolerance effect to it, to where you don't require more to get high, the more experienced you are with cannabis, that you actually can get the same effect with less because it's a natural system. It's not coming in like a sledgehammer and either replacing dopamine with an artificial source or blocking the reuptake of dopamine to where you're starting to affect your internal brain chemistry and the balance of the neurons in your brain and the receptor systems. Instead, it's using a natural system. When you smoke your first puff of cannabis, you're not releasing dopamine and endorphins. Your pituitary gland starts to spit out melatonin. Melatonin is the neurotransmitter that's used for sleep. And the proof that it's melatonin comes in the fact that your brain waves go into the alpha state brain waves when you feel the first initial effects of cannabis. So if you want to save a lot of money on your pot, you put it down. You titrate your dose. That's why smoking is so important as opposed to eating. You can titrate your dose. You can take as much as you really want to take and no more or no less. If you put your cannabis down after the first one or two hits, you remain in the dreamy phase. It's a waking dream. It's like REM sleep except you're awake. And it's one of the healthiest things that your brain can do. But if you want to continue smoking on then you're feeling more of the CBD effects. You're feeling more of the body effects. And those are the effects of cannabis that are crucial to people that have tremors, people that have uh, neuropathic conditions, people that have uh, MS, people that have even some forms of um, muscular dystrophy or benefiting anyone with a spastic condition. They, they require that feeling. But for the recreational user, you don't necessarily need that. And so you get everything you want out of your cannabis recreationally out of the first one or two puffs. Now, patients, they need to be able to eat and they need to be able to smoke so that they can have the kind of dosages that they can control. And they need to be able to grow their own because ultimately the patient knows which strain of cannabis works the best for them. But we do need to have experts that are able to grow and provide cannabis for patients who can do the experimentation that the patient doesn't have the time to go through, that we need to start sharing this knowledge and Thanks to states like Colorado, thanks to states like Michigan, thanks to states like Washington and Oregon and down the list, we're slowly getting this research that should have been done by our own government decades ago. Well, I'm saying that even those just starting driving or smoking or who haven't smoked for a while and then get hold of something strong and smoke again, even then, no matter how extreme it might be, they are still much better in control of motor vehicles than someone who's just had a little drink. Exactly. It's not like you're going to be laid up the rest of the night. It just means that you're going to be a little uneasy or maybe a little distractible until you've leveled off. And that can take, you know, as short as a half an hour. Where yeah. with, with alcohol, it's the opposite. You just get worse and worse. And I know from my own experience that, you know, from alcohol or, or any other thing that would be uh, sedating, uh, sometimes you don't even want to try walking. Whereas with uh, pot, there's really not much thought about it being a problem. No, I can't say I've ever had a problem walking, but I have seen people who are wheelchair bound use cannabis and get out of their wheelchair, be able to feed themselves, be able to dress themselves, be able to use the bathroom by themselves. You know, trivial little, you know, quality of life issues like that that are much more important than just someone just lose. Oh, well, he's dying of cancer or AIDS or, you know. Something So we might as well let them take the deadly marijuana, too, while we're at it. No, cannabis is for all kinds of illnesses. You don't have to be at death's door to qualify for cannabis medicine. And, uh, of course, some wise people have said that all use is medical use because we live in a sick, fallen world. And this plant was put here in order to give us a, a way of escape. And I believe that's kind of a biblical promise that we're fulfilling. Now... Not content to just attempt to block uh, marijuana legalization and uh, increase the penalties in Nebraska, our Attorney General 
uh, along with the uh, Oklahoma Attorney General, Nebraska, Oklahoma, sue Colorado over marijuana law, want to uh, stop them from having legal marijuana. Have an editorial from uh, journalrecord.com. That's the Oklahoma uh, City, Oklahoma, uh, by uh, uh, journal staff, December 22nd, 2014. Uh, Pruitt's Hazy Logic, their attorney general is uh, Scott Pruitt. It says, well, we wonder whose interests he is serving by joining a lawsuit against the state of Colorado regarding its legalization of marijuana. Pruitt signed on to Nebraska's effort to get the Supreme Court of the United States to overturn the Centennial State's decision to make it legal uh, to sell and consume cannabis. Early numbers showed declines in violent and property crime in Denver in the months after the law ch laws changed, and that doesn't address that there was less need to chase down and lock up people for marijuana offenses. But Pruitt and Nebraska Attorney General John Bruning claim that the change in laws approved by voters as Amendment 64 placed a burden on neighboring states. However, their petition to the Supreme Court does not provide specifics on inf supposed increases in illegal marijuana in Oklahoma and Nebraska or quantify the alleged increase in law enforcement spending. Since Oklahoma already enthusiastically attempts to enforce marijuana prohibition, it's hard to believe that our neighbors' policies made a material difference for state agencies. Uh, Pruitt often promotes the power of states' rights, especially in fights against the EPA. For an issue such as pollution, we need a national authority because there's no way for individual states to police the air floating over its borders. For something like pot, Oklahoma and Nebraska have the right and ability to choose what laws to enact and how they will be enforced without interfering with what goes on elsewhere. That is to say, there is very little reason to claim that the Supreme Court should force Colorado to recriminalize cannabis just because it runs counter to Oklahoma's official position. Yeah, I mean, they're just hitting themselves. I mean, what I saw was that they said there was four times more uh, cannabis coming across the border than before, and that's easily explainable by ramped up enforcement more than actual increase in traffic. I think pretty much they found this out in Europe in every country that legalized. You know, they were expecting usages per capita to skyrocket, and what they figured out and what we're going to figure out here is pretty much everybody who wants to use cannabis is already using it. Absolutely. All you're doing is taking the criminality out of it because people already are using it. Right. So instead of ramping up your enforcement four times and spending four times more of our tax dollars on this worthless you know, civil war on cannabis, you could be going... And I wonder how many drunk drivers are getting passed. I wonder how many truckloads of cocaine are getting passed because they just want to bust people for cannabis and they know if they just pull over any out-of-state plate with a teenager in it, they got a chance of getting some. Well, we've been talking about the uh, marijuana legalization and other marijuana-related uh, bills that are going to be in a public hearing uh, Friday, March 6th at 1.30 p.m. in room 1113 at the Nebraska State Capitol. The uh, Cannabis Compassion and Care Act, LB 643, will be one of those, which I will uh, be for, and then there would be the one LB-326, which would make uh, marijuana brownies a felony, and uh, the bill ties that in with uh, outlawing uh, synthetic marijuana like K2 and bath salts and all sorts of nasty stuff like that. So it's really a pernicious bill. So will I really, really get in trouble if I take bath salts and make those into a brownie? I don't know. Maybe wow. it'd be something to bring to the hearing. Uh, <laughs> we'll just have, and I think everyone should bring their thing to the hearing. Everybody should come. You don't even necessarily have to get up and speak. Just show up and fill that place because they'll know what you're there for. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Jay of, uh, of many campaigns, um, most lately of Omaha Normal and Nebraska Normal, and Ed of Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana can be found on Facebook and also at Nebraska Veterans for Medical Marijuana dot com. Speaking of various uh, legislative bills concerning marijuana and the public hearing, which will be this Friday, March sixth at one thirty p.m. in room one 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 three. Any last words? Anything else yes. you'd like to say, gentlemen? No more stupid compromises. Give us cures, not wars. Uh, 45 franchises of KFC in Colorado are licensed dispensaries now. 
I'd like to point that out. <laughs> Hooray. That's just good marketing. See, this is the thing. When, when the Republican legislature gets to smell the money behind us, when the farmers realize how valuable feral Nebraska hemp seed is in Colorado right now, farmers are going to be kicking down your doors if you don't get out of the way and let them farm. Well, let's hope so. This show is followed by Music City Roots, Music City Roots on KZUM, uh, midnight until 2 a.m. every Wednesday morning.